By far, one of the most common questions that I get asked is about photo editing workflow. Specifically, which order should you use our Topaz apps in combination with a host app like Adobe Lightroom or Photoshop? So I figured I'd share with you my workflow. And there are two points that I wanna make. The first is, again, this is my workflow. This is how I edit photos using my applications. And that's not to say that this is the only workflow that you should consider. I wanna show you how I use these applications so that you can make a decision as to whether, you know, this works with your workflow too. But don't take this as the end all be all that this is Brian telling you this is the way you have to do things. The second point that I wanna make is that my workflow is not static, meaning the order in which I use our apps here is not always the same from image to image. In some cases, I might use Denoise. In other cases, I might not use any of our apps. I let the image dictate which applications I use. And in this photo, which was taken by my very good friend, Matt Kleskowski, I'm gonna walk through how I edit it using Adobe Lightroom and using all three of our core imaging apps, Denoise AI, Sharpen AI, and Gigapixel AI. So with that, let's start working on this image. The first thing that I do usually with an image is fix the tone and color. And so again, this photo by Matt Kleskowski is a little bit underexposed. If we look at the image info, you can see he took it with a Sony A7R Mark III and the Sony 100 to 400 millimeter F4.5 to 5.6 GM lens. As far as his exposure goes, he had to bump up his ISO to 2500 in order to get his shutter speed really fast to freeze the bird in action. So let's go ahead and fix the color and tone. I'm gonna open up exposure over here a little bit and bring the white point out, you can see that we have a lot of uh, this gap over here to uh, for the white point to the edge of the histogram. So that's what I'm doing here is I'm opening that up a little bit. I'll open up the highlights just a bit and I'll go ahead and adjust the black point and the shadows. So that's looking good for the most part here. And then I'm gonna add some contrast by applying a slight S curve. So I'll drop a point here on my tone curve and bring that up. You can see that increases the highlights and I'm going to drop a point here and make those shadows a bit more rich. And then let's open up the midpoints. And you can see if I toggle the tone curve, how that adds really nice contrast. Now you might be wondering why I didn't use the contrast slider. I typically don't use the contrast slider because I like having more control over contrast by using the, uh, the tone curve here and applying just a very slight S curve. Now I'm not gonna apply any texture clarity or dehaze. I typically don't do that at this point over here, but I will add a little bit of vibrance. I'm also going to take the white balance dropper. And again, this isn't very scientific, but the bird's feathers are a bit gray. So I'm gonna click here and you can see that that gets rid of that bit of a warm color cast that was in the image. It looks a bit more neutral now. Now, as far as the composition goes, I really want to bring emphasis to the bird and because it's such a small bird it doesn't look very large in this composition so I'm going to go ahead and select the crop tool and then I'm going to make a much smaller composition here put the focus box just so that it really covers the bird so right around here and that is our new composition and you can see that we really brought the bird into focus and we obviously have some issues that we need to work on. First, you can see that there's plenty of noise in the photo. And again, that's because Matt increased his ISO to 2500, so that's to be expected. So to address that, I'll use Denoise. Then if we zoom in a bit here, let's get a little closer, you can see that it's not as sharp on the eye. So I wanna bring out more sharpness there, uh, as well as increase edge sharpness on all of the feather edges here. So we'll use Sharpen AI for that. And then finally, if we go to grid view, you'll see that this is a 42 megapixel file, but with the crop, we're actually gonna bring it down to about two megapixels, and I'll show you that in a second. But I don't want a two megapixel photo, I actually want to increase the resolution back to at least 42 megapixels, if not larger. And to do that, we're gonna use Gigapixel AI. So as you can see in this particular example, it makes sense to take the image that's been edited in Lightroom, send it to Denoise AI to get rid of the noise, then to Sharpen AI to add some more sharpness. And then finally, we'll upscale the photo in Gigapixel AI. So let's go ahead and get rid of the noise here. I'm gonna right click on the photo, go to Edit In and select Topaz Denoise AI. 
I'll just keep all of these default settings here and then click edit to get over to the application. So the first thing that I like to do whenever I go into any of our apps, including Denoise AI, is change the view to comparison view. And the reason for that is I like to see multiple AI models being processed at once. So let's go ahead here and change our zoom to 200%. Okay, so now I have three different AI models, standard, clear, and low light. And we have four AI models in total. And so I wanna see what severe noise looks like. So between these three, I think clear is my least favorite. So I'm gonna select this quadrant here and I'm gonna change that AI model to severe noise. And between these three, I actually like low light the most. So I'm gonna select it and then change my view back to single view and we'll zoom in to 300% just to really see the bird's head. And when I click in the preview area, I'll see the original photo and when I let go, I'll see the processed version. So that's looking really good here. I'll also change my zoom to fit so I can see the whole photo and it looks really nice and clean. So now that I'm done, I'll click on apply to return back to Lightroom. And like I mentioned before, the original photo is 42.2 megapixels and the cropped version is just under three megapixels. So we did lose a lot of resolution. And if we go ahead here and compare the two photos, let's, let's kind of zoom in here and see, you can see just how much cleaner it is now. All that noise has been removed, but we still have a lot of that edge detail. But I still wanna bring out even more detail using Sharpen AI. So let's go ahead and we'll open this photo up, right click, go to edit in, and now we're gonna to go to the second of our Topaz applications with Sharpen AI. And just like before, I'm gonna use the default settings and click edit to head on over. And just like with Denoise AI, I'm gonna go ahead and change my view to comparison view. And let's just zoom in to 200% just like before and reposition the bird. Now between these three models, I think two soft looks the best. So I'm gonna select this quadrant and then I'm going to preview the other two modes. So we're on two soft normal, then I'm gonna click on very noisy and very blurry. Between these three, I think very noisy and normal do a good job. So I'm gonna stick with normal here and then change my view back to single view. And let's go ahead and zoom to fit. Now I'm gonna go ahead and take the suppressed noise slider and bring it to zero because there is no noise that needs to be suppressed. And I'm gonna take my remove blur slider and bring that down to about 20. And so if we go ahead and zoom in to 300%, you can see if I press and hold, we get a lot more of that edge detail that wasn't there before. So now that I'm done, I'll go ahead and click apply to return back to Lightroom. And in Lightroom, you can see here is our original photo once again, our version that we sent to Denoise AI, and then the version we just sent to Sharpen AI. Now it's time to upscale. I wanna increase the resolution without losing any detail. So I'm gonna right click, go to edit in and select Topaz Gigapixel AI, and I'll use the default settings once again. In Gigapixel, the first thing that I like to do is select the rate at which I'm gonna upscale. And so I want to upscale by 6X or 600%. Then I'm gonna go ahead and change my view to comparison view. And between these three models shown, I like low resolution the best, so I'm gonna make sure it's highlighted. I know it's highlighted because the quadrant label is blue. And then I'll go ahead and return back to single view and click on apply to return to Lightroom. Now that we're back in Lightroom, you can see this is the original photo that we edited and cropped in using Lightroom. Then we sent it to Denoise AI, got rid of all that noise, followed by Sharpen AI to bring that really nice edge detail. And then finally, Gigapixel AI to upscale it. And you can see we went from a 2.9 megapixel image to a 105.9 megapixel image without losing any quality. And so if I go ahead and compare the original image and our final output, you can see that it's just a lot cleaner and sharper. And again, this is the workflow that I follow for this particular image using all three applications. In some cases, I might not need to use Gigapixel AI if I have enough resolution, or if the image doesn't suffer from noise, I won't send it to Denoise AI. But in situations where I do need to use all of our apps, my most common workflow is edit the photo in Lightroom, send it to Denoise AI to get rid of noise, then to Sharpen AI to bring out edge detail, and then finally to Gigapixel AI if I need to upscale it.
There are going to be plenty more of these photo editing workflow series videos, so be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and be sure to check out our learning center at learn.topazlabs.com. And if you want to try any of our apps, head over to topazlabs.com to download a free trial today.